It's day seven of Ohujin's Valorant rank grind, and things have been up and down all week. But today, things may have turned for the worst. After having a rough day and ending off the day at three and seven, Ohujin is on the grips of dropping back down to Ascendant 3. Can he climb back up? Can he deal with the adversity? We're gonna find out today by breaking down one of his VODs on a set. Let's do it. Wuhujin going for Radiant here. This time we're gonna be going on Ascent. And again, we're gonna be looking over the comps, giving my feedback on what I think is gonna happen this game. So right away, looking at this comp right here, a big factor that we have uh, a weakness on, but also something that will compensate is the controller. Now, Clove is a controller that is actively being used and ranked right now because it's brand new, but quite literally, they cannot replace Omen. Omen on this map is so, so key because the paranoia. The paranoia cleans so much lanes up, allows for so much clear uh, satchel play, obviously from Ray's here, but normally you'll see a Jet being played as the main duelist, so it's going to be tough to be able to work with that. However, they do replace as a flex duelist, which is something that you don't necessarily need on this map, but can work in certain comps. So having Clove here can work, it's just a little bit of a debilitating um, method. The one advantage that we do have on this comp is info gathering, and the info gathering obviously comes from the Sova and the Sky. So we have a double with the dog and the drone, which helps a lot for gathering information and figuring out where we want to hit, the Flash can also, in a way, replace Paranoia, but not fully, obviously, as the Paranoia is quite OP on this map. So those are the areas that we need to be considering when we're satcheling in. Who enables us directly? Obviously, the Sky will help us quite a bit, and the Sova will take away all those nasty angles. So when we're satcheling, we can modify our paths based on the information that we gather. Now, on the opposite side, we see a Flex Duelist as well. So this is going to be matching our Clove right here, typically something you don't see in uh, a regular comp or a meta comp on ascent and the other big factor is the cypher now whenever you're dealing with a cypher in any ranked match you want to make sure that you're dealing with the utility just like any other sentinel but especially the camera a lot of times you'll see camera use towards the b main entrance sometimes you'll see it on the window and this will take away this entire path obviously so what you'll need to do is kind of slow default to make sure you take that away because if they get that early info that no one's going towards b they could literally stack everyone towards a on the defender side and never have to play B considering the fact that usually you'll have trips or other things towards uh, B mid and you might have one person posted up in that area and the rest of it is just defended from this cam in general you're not going to see anyone attacking B you can put all your resources towards A so it's going to be important to first identify where Cypher's playing attack that utility usually through a slow defaulty play that will take control of mid take control of B main take control of A main and it's something that you should ultimately do even if you have a killjoy on the opposing team We're Regardless, looking for that inf information, looking for that camera is going to be very key to the success of Wuhujin. Let's see how it goes. Starting off on attacker side, I want to really pay close attention to how Wuhujin communicates in this VOD. As we've talked about several times, the initiation and where he's action calming, how he's moving into the site, something that I really want to see him taking full responsibility for in this game. A huge nade huge nade great entry we're going to satchel right in off this one now this is protocol based when you get one kill on the site usually and i would assume that dopey is giving him uh thought processes on what you need to do in a ranked environment typically you're going to see you know one maybe two towards a you'll have one maybe two uh towards catwalk so usually you'll see three or two covering a all together so you'll see those kinds of combinations now Protocol based, Dopa is probably saying to him, if you get one kill, we want to double satchel it, and that equals double satchel. Okay, so we'll say double satchel, DS. You get two kills, that probably equals double satchel or single satchel in one of the two. Uh, if you get three kills, that means we just walk in, hold on to our utility usually. If we get no kills, we want to do this and this. You want to protocol everything for what happens so that you have a good set of mindset of what you need to do. A lot of times I talk about the random access memory or the RAM of your mind. And the best way to do that is to set really good protocols for what if scenarios. If I get this, I do this. If I get this, I do this. That way you can think more freely about what you want to do in the moment um, that you're doing them so it can flow a lot more easier and give you a bit better ability to make better decisions oh, fuck, he's back, guys. so this is the one problem again if we go back we started off this VOD talking about how am I going to react on certain things 
Obviously the protocol base is important, but we want to make sure that we're communicating our entry. So if we look at where our team is right now, there's, they're dodging utility, they're playing back on A main right now, and they're not really clear as to what Wahujin's doing. Now, this is a great entry, everything's good up at this point. Unfortunately, there's a second player playing on the A site. So now you've forced a 1v1, and you've lost the value of that immediate kill. So a little bit of excitement factor here from Wuhujin. It's going to be important for him to obviously identify that we went in a little bit too fast here. we got to remember again, what we've seen several times, and this happens so much in my student VODs, look at the timer how long we have on this round to be able to work this map. It's a map that loves to be worked slow. A lot of times too, if you get a kill, let the enemy team kind of reset, move around, sweat a little bit on where you think they're going to end up going to, right? You could slowly take A main completely silent all the way through and then finish off and hit the site and have them all spread out around the map still wondering where the heck you're gonna go. So time is always your friend in this situation. We don't need to be moving this fast. Oh, fuck, he's back, dice. Looking for the camera here. As we talked about, I want to make one note, and it's something I talk about with all of my students all the time, and it's not necessarily on Wuhujin for this, but it is for all five players. My recommendation, this is what I would say to Wuhujin, is take the bomb with you to the barriers and drop it off at all times. This may be a factor at some point during this round, and it could cost us. The bomb does not have cooties, ladies and gentlemen. Get over there, bring it, and you drop it off somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be a controller. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sentinel or anything along those lines. It could be the duelist that brings it over and drops it off that way you can still move forward you have the bomb in a better spot and you're able to actually play off of it properly here's the camera so we know there's a cypher here it's probably a solo cypher so we could probably put a prediction in there saying there's most likely just one towards b one towards mid probably three towards a what do you guys hear over there these are all conversation points we can have right now whenever you're on eco you want to try to get value wherever you can so damage is great you know we talked about bear ass minimum what could we get out of this info is also another major factor for bear ass minimum a lot of times when you're playing ranked people don't change up their setups that much so you might see uh character swaps on certain maps or sides of the map but overall you'll get an idea of what they're doing my prediction is a 113 or something along those lines you might see a, a 212 here it's possible but right now everything's kind of siding towards 113 we just saw our teammates hit towards a right through here so now i'm thinking maybe it's a one two two or something along those lines there's a lot of options here but this is where if you can test the waters on a round like this where you're investing for the future rounds you can get better information make better decisions later on they don't see you guys a yet two there so i'm guessing it was probably my original prediction of one one three at that point they're just playing really passive which is really odd when you're playing against them on eco all these fights are long range Left. Do what you can here. I, I have nothing against any of the plays that he's really made here. He's got to do something, obviously. He's got a yeah, pistol, and it's a eco round. So, bare ass minimum. I think we got decent amount of value here. It is what it is. Call it and, and speaking. Nice. Great kill. Yes, they are. For sure. I don't disagree. But we have to ask ourselves, and I know that you know this with Hujin, I know that we had this conversation already, accountability. And I know that when you do this VOD review with your coaches, you're going to be asking yourself the question, what am I accountable for? What can I be doing better here for my team? Do I need to be moving this fast? Let's go over the protocols again. Is it something that you need to be acting off of right away? We already know that they have two played in A all the time so far, every single round right here. Is double satcheling the best move right now? Or could we stage a little bit better? Could we maybe have the Sova clear out some of the close angles? Again, you're also on your first gun round. They're on a bonus round. What kind of fights are they gonna look for? Close range fights. Getting some success from this fight. I have no problem with milking this again. Yikes. Should be able to catch a timing here, potentially. Just playing to antagonize. He throws a satchel out here to try to keep the attention over here. So as we talked about before, lurking, there's two types of lurks. There's the timing lurk, which he could have maybe potentially got something there. I think there would have been probably someone holding. That's why he's thinking to himself, well, if I throw the satchel out, you know, it's probably going to keep that person there a little bit longer. Obviously, the B site's being hit right now, so maybe there's a rotation. But throwing that satchel out may make him think uh, if he is on that a player um that who is moving forward on the site i'm gonna look for a lurk kill Spike down, right there. he's expecting phoenix to either come cat right now 
or to be in middle market. One of the two. There. Okay, so it wasn't Phoenix, there was someone else on there. This is another good read, right here. Beautiful. Phoenix should be close. Ooh, we got Cypher. So where's Phoenix now? Questioning. Probably not in B main right now, but smart to clear it out. This is actually very winnable right now. We get the bomb down or we get one more frag here. It's massive. Yes. So he made the right read, clears out market. And he says to himself, where else could they possibly be? Giraffe, slight bit of crosshair placement error there, but he had the right thought process. He's like, they're probably stairs. They're probably in this area. Just made a little bit of a small little mistake, but overall, like that was a really good attempt to be able to make this round go back in his favor. Good to see. The one issue here, and this is why KO is so important on this map as well, is to disable Sentinel Utility. So it's gonna be hard for Wahoosian to be able to just initiate through a rocket here. He's asking for a recon, he's asking for a utility, which is good to hear. Asking for enabling. So it was smoke here, probably dart in this area, just to be able to clear the bottom. Uh, we call this one mid, right? So one, two, and three, or we call it bottom mid. Mid one is usually the easiest one to call out. You can make that call out. Just ping the map for anyone in ranked who might be in lower rank. People might not have heard of mid one, two, and three. Just ping the map and say, we're gonna take mid one, can you dart mid one here for me? Ahead. Perfect, this covers all the close range angles. So we know that mid one is clear. They can only be mid two, mid three at this point. There's a chance of a rotation right here. That's why he's holding this angle right now. He's not worried about market because if market ends up swinging out on him and he dies from it, someone's probably going to trade in that situation. Should be peaking here in a few seconds if they are rotating over. There's a lot of presence towards mid. There it is. So it was a Sova. Oh no. Oh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Now, he made a really good attempt at this. The one thing that you need to remember, especially in ranked, is you need to respect the drone. You have to respect the drone, especially when there's an alt proc. So as soon as he sees this drone, Instead of trying to challenge it, you might argue just hiding from it altogether and just giving it the respect that it needs. Perfect. It's already too late at this point. There's no chance. But there's definitely going to be times in your games where you could make that decision to play off or play away from it as soon as you hear it. I see this all the time in maps like Icebox, for example. A drone gets thrown out and the teammate or person who is being pursued by said drone is usually peeking out and trying to break it. And obviously it's good to do that because it's better for map control and whatnot if you can like disturb that process. But whenever the alt is available in ranked, you will see drone alt plays all the time. And it's just something you need to be aware of. Okay, trying to do that B play again. This is a common buy for raises, the judge. Obviously this is going to be a double satchel play of some kind and looking for close range fights. This is scary as hell. A camera and an Odin being played on B main is terrifying, especially in this situation. Smartly puts himself behind the box so he can't get spammed. The dart, also terrifying. This is what makes B main such a problem. If you've watched my map guides and how I, I suggested things should change, I talk about having metal planes or panes on this area, kind of like what you have on tiles here. And that can help displace a little bit of the distress and pressure it takes to be able to take this B main space. So you're not just sitting here being spanned through paper walls all the time. That's my take and one of the things I feel should be changed. Now we're going for the satchel play. The thing is, is that his teammates are nowhere near to be able to work off this. We have the bomb heading towards A. We have a whole bunch of things going towards B. I believe this might've been part of the plan. So we bait so that our A take can be a little bit easier potentially. So unfortunate. I got at least three B boys. Yes. Okay, so this is that bait play. Again, this is like an antagonist alert. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> Unlucky. So, what can we take from this round? Again, looking at Cypher utility, all the stuff. Can we break this utility a little bit more? Can we antagonize a little bit more? 
Can we take a little bit more time to gather more information? We don't necessarily need to go in right away. I like what he's doing here. I like the thought process. He's pulling attention. He did pull three over, but did we have to go right at that moment? Could we have waited a little bit longer? This game is far from over as well. So, so early into the game. Oh, this is huge. We can move off of this. Aw, oh, darn. Gets dinked, so he has to wait a little bit. Okay, this could still work for us. Oh, oh, perfect. Okay. This is a gamble play, and it's a smart gamble play. And again, you know, you're playing an eco slash bonus kind of situation. You need to challenge for the space. You need to go off this. And I love that the Silva alt goes in and he takes advantage of that. They're blasting this lane so he can easily move up and get this cheeky kill. And this is definitely a winnable situation now with the KJ alt being active as well. Asking for the alts has been a problem that Wahoojins had in previous games. Uh, this is where, you know, Dope Eye and I kind of butt heads a little bit with one of the uh, rounds that we had on one of the previous games. The macro here dictates that we should win just purely off of this KJ alt. And it's something that we should be willing to allow them to invest in the situation, considering the fact that we are on this bonus round right now. What? We're just going to live and exist here. I have three, I have three. Right side, right side, right side. Should be waiting for them to start moving and then we go from behind at this point. Chances of them being middle, the reason why he's putting his back to it, is very, very low at this point. It's so late into the round that if someone's coming up middle, it's pretty much troll. The issue that we're having right now is I'm worried about where Killjoy is. So the win condition that we had is now gone. If things don't go well right here, if we end up dying on site, which again, chat, please, and you're in a post plant, do not play the spot, especially against the meta comp. You're looking at either getting Odin down this line for free, Paranoia down this line for free, being jumped on and blasted. Even against an eco, it's just not a good spot to be in a post plant. I can definitely see this round going the wrong way if Wuhujin makes the wrong decision here and moves too fast. Perfect. This should lock it down. Okay. <laughs> the writing was on the wall there for complete disaster, and thankfully we got out of that. Boys, we did it. All right, let's smoke there. hat. Let's smoke bot there. mid. And we're gonna walk out. And we're gonna we're gonna hit fucking there. B through market, and we'll Go. just need a CT smoke. I think the read here is that the cipher utility has primarily been towards B, so covering the site, and probably someone is just watching mid. So I think he's thinking it's gonna be a one one three, which we've kind of seen this entire half so far, and this is gonna be something that might catch someone off guard here. So I think this is a good call. Get out of my way, dropping smoke. Got noise, got noise. Enemy spotted. Where should I dart? Saws, saws. Good. Up. There's one cat. Reloading. Changing the plan up a little bit. I don't like challenging here. I think it's just back off. Just back off, just back off, just back off. The problem is, is that he has alt right now, and you're begging him to push through this smoke and challenge on his eco. Kind of like this. Uh, <laughs> ends up working out, but the fact that he doesn't pop alt here is insane to me. I feel like this is a freebie for your alt at this point. Go one more tree. <clears throat> Can you fight this over with me, Cloak? No peeking. Yep. It's those moments so you just clench your ass cheeks and hope for the best. One enemy remaining. Ends up working out. We have the three killed on A again. A 1-1-3 one, one, situation in middle. Uh, in B and A site. So they seem to keep playing this situation and this, uh, this setup. Oh, never mind. You have smoke. Oh, you'll come out of it often. I like it. I'm low holding on. There. Yes, see, this is what I was talking about earlier in other VODs. I know Wuhuj has been watching my videos a little bit, which is awesome. And this is something that I recommend ping the map and say, I've got this line. I'm watching this. Very, very good. WWW. Love it. Love it. Love it. That way your teammates can play off you properly. There's no confusion. Great improvement. Great communication. Stuff that I know Wuhuj knows. And he's starting to do a little bit more actively. Excellent to see. This is an important note on this map. If you're going to be aggressive on one side and these guys end up falling back, expect aggression somewhere else. So if you're that lurker in the situation, anytime there's action from your bigger group, and it's usually going to be KJ lurking in the situation, just prepare for a response either through mid to try to take map control 
or through B main. In a ranked environment, it's harder to predict this because a lot of the moves that they make is completely random, but especially in a team environment, when you're playing scrims or you're playing Premier, that's the usual response. You take space, they try to take space away from you. And that cast mark is so ass. The reason why he's saying it's ass is because of this peek out right here, and he's also worried about Phoenix playing off of it. The thing is, is that regardless of where you place this smoke, Phoenix is going to play off of it, especially with the alt active. I'm so confused as to why this Phoenix has not used alt once <laughs> this half so far. He's been holding on to this for a very, very long time. Half the boom bot here to clear it out. Clears out all the front of pop, pop dog here. Down. There's someone close, and this could be flash play, so he has to be very careful here. Yeah, there's your Phoenix. Well played, getting out of the situation. Just going for a fight here, trying to get one kill. Again, Phoenix, like, you literally pop alt here, challenge him, and you probably finish him off, and this round's over. A big problem, you know, I've talked about this in previous VODs, a big problem with ranked players is they don't know how to use their alts, and they're too afraid to use them. We're clearly seeing this on the Phoenix. So again, this buy is indicative of long-range play. Obviously no satchels, so we're not looking at our frenzy, we're not looking at a shorty, anything like that. We're looking for info. We're looking to play smart, clean Valorant here. No, that can work, bro. Trust. I can't. I have to like do detail. Here we go. This smoke bomb, man. Where? Where do I go? This is a setting that you can change to. My push to talk key is left alt. I have it set to that all the time. By default, left alt brings up the inventory over the sky's head. So if you're asking for utility and you don't really know if they have it or not, immediately you've already got the answer right away. And you just press alt, you communicate and you ask for the utility, but you can see overhead if they actually have it or not. It's a really cool little hack that I use. So they're forced to like wait it out or just use utility? So Wuhujin can set that to his push to talk key. We gotta be really careful here. So far it's an execution towards A. So the big issue that we see here is that if they do execute on site, we have low HP. Now I talked about previously using the boom bot to lead into the fight. It won't matter too, too much regardless on the situation, but I would like to see if he's going to do it this time. That's one pick away numbers. Don't need to peek anymore. What you could do in this situation is play back into hell and do a jump spot. And this will probably keep you alive longer and give you information that you need instead of peeking out wide into the left hand side. I don't mind this. He's just low HP right now. So if they, so far the information that we've gotten, they're in mid, they've broken the turret and they've shown early presence towards A. So the problem that I'm seeing is that if they do go towards A, and he has put himself in a position where if they go cat, he's one shot, he's probably not winning that fight. Look at where his teammates are right now. His teammates are so far away that this is a guaranteed post-plant situation with a poor rotation time. So this is a little bit dangerous here. I personally prefer the jump spot back into hell. You can jump up and down and see over dice. So it looks like they're going to be going towards B in this situation. So this is going to be okay. We're not going to get punished on this. Could be a lurker here. I still want gun out, yeah. There could be a lurker on cat. Probably towards mid. That's insane that there was no call out. I understand his frustration here. How were they on site? How were they planting the bomb? And there wasn't one single call out here. Now, on Wahooja's part, ask for info. Ask, ask, ask. Same thing for us, you know, playing ranked. What do you guys see over on B? Are they in sight? These are all questions you can ask to inspire them to speak. Inspire your teammates to speak for you. Go together with your team, hold hands. Beautiful. Great retake. Questionable sight take. No one's communicating. So again, look, we had a rough start on the first half. We ended up bouncing back, and now we're in a 7-7 situation. Love what I'm seeing. Perhaps, perhaps. Every game is winnable. Are you hear anything, B? Yeah, the recon, over. You're um, dead. Oh, it smokes lit. Enemy spotted. Found them. They're hitting. Switch, jet switch. 
Why does Wilhujin have so much confidence to just make this play and not even bother looking at top mid? He's making what we call a gamble, and he's talked about this several times in his own content. You have to make gamble plays. The gamble plays are the best times to do it is when you're on your bonus or when you're on your eco. Now, when you're playing in low rank, a lot of the times you're going to see five-man rushes towards any bomb site. Surprising enough, we see that in this particular game right now as well. It would be prudent for him to at least check because a lot of times when you're playing against a bonus or eco round, the strategy typically is 4-1. What does that mean? Four people typically hit the front end side while one lurks through mid or lurks through mid this way. So there is a chance that he could have been taken out here, but he's doing this in the retrospect of trying to move as quickly as possible on a flank to this area here to try to catch a good timing. It takes half of a second to flick your eyes over there. I'd like to see him at least making that effort. Three lane. I'm already main, I'm already main. They're all on site, should be a call right here. All on site, all on site, all on site. And that was what literally <laughs> your teammate just said there. All on site, all on site. Spike planted. So take control of lane here. We want to basically, in this situation, use our outlaw to control this space right here. So that we can f we can force the enemy team into this area and constrict them in the spot. So taking lane, taking section by section, and basically slicing the pie, if you will. Nice spam from the Phoenix. We can just crouch and hold this space so that no one can jump up. Good smoke from the Omen. Another big value decision that we can make here is nobody goes in and they all die to the bomb. And then the following round, we're in a good spot with a full buy and the other team has a weak buy. And that could be a perfect opportunity for an outlaw buy again, because they're going to be all on half armor. So that could be a move that you make in the situation and just let them all die to the bomb. Because they're going to have to move out into you at some wait, point. Never mind. Wait. Just let them lose it again. Just let them die. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. This is a huge victory for us. One enemy huge victory. Perfect. Massive round. Not guns, not guns, not guns. Great situation to be in. So this is what I'm talking about with bare ass minimum. We want to do damage, we want to get frags. This is all massive to help us in this following round. Now if you look at the situation right here, there's only going to be potentially one person who's going to buy full armor. But they can't even do that because as Sova, you need to have utility like drone. So everyone here is going to be half armored. Perfect opportunity again for the outlaw. Really well played. Excellent bare ass minimum. Excellent small victories obtained. We'd love to see that. Whenever you're looking at a round by round, sometimes you get to see the big picture. The big obstacle here is the opposing team won't have finances this following round. And not only that, you reset their money. So now we're looking at a really solid half. So sometimes losing rounds can be a gift, not a curse. It's a matter of how you look at it. Big round to win. This could basically be value of two rounds here if we end up winning this. They are going to save, sounds like. So a good smart uh, reset from the enemy team. If it is falling back. I did damage, I did damage, I did damage! Wait, am I gonna lose? Yeah. I'm blind. Oh, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. What? I did damage! You have to oh, yeah, it has to be an assist or kill. Oh. It's two up top mid. Oh, this is rough. The worst situation that we could be in, especially considering that they didn't buy or commit here. So now everything that we did on the following round, if we lose this round, is in vain. Rough. Remaining. Got three. Rough. Save the weapon here, cut the losses. Can't even do that. Oh, that's a big round for the attacker side right there. Big thrifty from them. So now the money has completely shifted again, and we're in a weak buy. So now the tables have turned again. 
It's one of those things that I recommend when you have a big round like that. Mention at the beginning of the round, this round is worth two rounds. In theory, the other team ended up going for an eco, which was a very smart situation considering the fact that their money was going to be reset on the round loss, which means they would have only gotten 1900 on the following round. So they didn't go for a commitment buy uh, or anything along those lines. But had they gone for that, it's important to communicate that this round is worth two rounds. Everyone plays smart. Just remind everyone at the beginning, focused up, this round could be worth two rounds. Other things to say is, if there's ultimates on the field, don't be afraid to use your ults this round. This round is worth two rounds. So pay attention to the money because that's how you can roll rounds in your favor quite frequently. And win a lot of games because of it. This is going to be a big site execution. We have five alts available. Anytime I see five alts available at any point in time, I just think this is a poor, poor organization for the enemy team for what they're going to be doing throughout the entire half. So I would imagine there's going to be a big site hit here. Wherever Phoenix alt ends up going is where they're going to execute to. We are one away from a rocket. This is important to note. we got to think about how we can counter all of these alts. The best way is to counter alt for alt here. We could be asking for a sky alt at some point. I would stagger that with a dart or a drone to figure out what's going on here. Ask for information in the situation. We got to figure out where they're going. This is going to be a site. Remember, we talked about how omen is the initiation. If you see the omen flash, that means we're going to be going to that bomb site typically. There's a Phoenix alt. Crazy that we're countering all of this util right now. What? A sky alt would have been perfect in the situation instead of him just running in there and dying. Smoking <laughs> man. Again, and this is so important too, because if sky alts here and we play off of it and we get one frag, our rockets available, and this round's pretty much over. Looks like we got two great return kills from Sova, so this is this round is back in our control. With one person being a main and one person being, I believe, tree in the situation. Jenny side, Jenny side. So this is where you could have made an argument that he leaves him alone in tree and rotates and then takes sight together with his team, knowing where the last person is. This is a great round from the teammates to be able to bounce back here. Love to see it. Switching up his position over towards B site now. They smoke mid. Here we come, be man. Holy crap. Wow. That somehow ended up working out. I was clinching my ass cheeks on that one. It is a dumb round. I agree 100%. The problem that we have here is our info <laughs> initiators are not gathering info. The fact that a dart is being thrown right now or even a drone probably is still in the inventory is really the problem here. Now, the question is, is could we ask to be enabled to be pushed up into a certain space? Say like the drone comes up, if we get a tag or we get a whole bunch of people hit, can we use alts? Can we use rocket to be able to work on that? They were allowed to freely walk up here. And that's the questionable situation, especially with the comp that we have right now. So what could we do as Wahujin? We can ask to be enabled, ask for the dart in specific areas, ask for the drones so that you can play contact, be aggressive into B main, get the information. And that way, this very, very dice situation of jet dashing over and a whole bunch of forward momentum from the Phoenix was happening, that we're able to get a better fight for us. It ends up working out, but it was highly dangerous and could have gone either way. And that was actually a better position for the attackers than it was the defenders. I can't afford my trusty boom bot. I'm going to say this. There's been some questionable VOD so far where you haven't used it. So I'm totally fine. <laughs> my trusty boom bot. It's good that he's noticing that he's got a boom bot now, though. Troll, troll, troll. <laughs> questionable drone here. Very questionable drone. It's just so early into the round. They're up tree, they're up tree. Nice, Nova. Great kill. They're not fully up, but The deep like line here is actually not bad considering the fact that the enemy cipher crossed. So if he holds this line, they're not going to expect him to be here at this point. Still, like, we don't really need to right now. The alarm bot. He's coming, cat. 
This is something that I always talk about. I'm apparently just turning into a solo VOD now. The dart towards mid is fine for enabling Wuhujin, but it was never asked for. So that's one major factor. I always recommend when you're later into the round, at least sub one minute. The dart should go towards main on either side. And the reason why is that most sight hits, especially in ranked, will come from this area. And that will give us a pretty good idea as to where they're going to probably end off on. So you're guaranteed value if that dart gets broken. If it doesn't get broken, you're assuming right there it's probably going to be B. And unlikely that they're going to be waiting out the dart. So land it right here so you can guarantee the value. Land it right here so you can guarantee the value. On side, on side. Nice satchel play here. Hell, hell, I have to be smart. So one planting, one on gen. This should be called out. They've got to be both on site. Oh, no. You have the planter and you have the other guy. Okay, so because he went and crosshair placed A main, I think there's a bit of a lack of awareness on the situation. You could have double satcheled towards A main there as an option too. Cypher was killed right away, so the flank was wide place? open. Always pay attention to when the sentinel goes down, so you can create more opportunities for yourself for flanks. We talked about this before, when we're dealing with comps that don't have sentinels, use that to your advantage, start flanking more actively. Okay, so being enabled by a Sova here in a shotgun position. One mid, there's one mid, nice. Huge, nice. huge frags over towards A. I have a trip. I'm gonna break trip. So this game. means that Cypher needs to be close. Yeah, there we go. Cypher's on catwalk. One one... No need to push forward here. Roll. Smartly I'm falls back in, in the situation. 5v2, no trip need to aggress anything. Trip. Guarantee the round win. Both there, both there, both there. I broke camp for you. They have to go ahead. No, they have to go ahead. They have to go ahead. Using the boom bot for info. Love it. The satchels here can just push people back. So this left. guarantees the round win right here. Love this. Very, very smart. Good use of his utility. Guarantee the round win. Perfect. So you're probably going to see a potential of two hero buys here because Cypher will be able to buy the following round as well. So why not? And he could be buying for the Phoenix here, dropping for the Phoenix. So again, we've seen the Phoenix pop alt, I think, twice so far this game. But that could be a play that we see is the aggressive Phoenix push here with a bot Vandal for him. No information on the B main again, which is dangerous. Dart's landing for A soon. Wait for it. Wait for Dart. There it is. Wait, Kizio, wait, Kizio, wait, Kizio. I don't know what that was. They haven't fighting. Yeah, they haven't Sounds like it's hell. He's close, he's close. I'm no, they're not going here. They're not going here. Omen's main, Omen's main. I'm not against this ult. Oh no. Chill, 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 chill. Never mind. Okay. I got one more. Okay, my main concern here was, was those two people, it ended up being that, was, was it these two people that were detained, or was it two people on A? What if this person wasn't detained, the Phoenix, and he was solo here, and you satchel into the spot? You're pretty much dead at that point. Again, this one right here, we talk about gamble plays, I think gamble plays is one of the bigger factors of this game. The gamble play here is high risk, considering that we're on the buy and they're on the eco. So I'm a, I was a little concerned that this play might have cost Wuhujin. I understand where his mindset comes from, but there was a small risk the detained wasn't actually those people on cat. Which could have been disastrous. Yeah, I heard big, going big, going big, going big. I'll make noise, okay? He one-way stairs. So that means he's probably playing Boathouse in this situation? I would assume. We have a boom bot? Okay. So, what was his thought process? The smoke one-way typically means you're going to be playing in Boathouse. 
which is a totally fine play in a 1v2 because you can isolate fights really well. The other play, which we just saw here, was the aggro. And typically, people will, off of a bomb site, other than this situation here, will play aggro to try to even the numbers up. And you kind of need to do that pretty much universally. Either play I'm fine with, he ended up going for a split in between, which is actually quite smart. If they don't come from CT and they're coming through market like this, you can catch a person off guard very easily. Now, if Wuhujin wasn't smart and he had his knives out and say he jump peeked this, now we're looking at a 1v1 situation, which would have been detrimental and nasty. Was there anything Wuhujin could have done? Yes, there was a possibility. Never mind. Smart play on the Omen. Love to see that kind of stuff. So hopefully we see some sort of info gather here. Nothing from Sova. We could be asking for information. Can you recon mid? There we go. Perfect. He was saying that. one out of I heard though. This is probably going to be a late pop on B right now. I feel. I'm smoking KJ. This is where I'd probably boom bot B main. Oh man. I think they might be contacting B. Yeah, he's feeling it too. We can confirm with information right here. here yes, boom, boom bot. bot. Love it. Boom there we go. Great minds right think now. alike. Yeah, this is definitely a contact. So, there's a few options. You could pop alt here and prevent them from moving in right away. I know how crazy that sounds, like how low value that could potentially be, but I'm looking over at my teammates right now and thinking like, are they too far for a rotate? And he's going to go for it. Love it. Okay, so this jet dash is a big factor. There's going to be a VOD review coming out pretty soon. Um, covering the fact that this jet dash is literally a terrible one if you're not setting up properly. And if there's two people on three. Okay, so if two people are playing three you're cooked um, and two people playing on B site in general. So I don't recommend this jet dash. If you know, there's two, if you know that there's one and it's usually a KJ, that's not bad because you can get enabled by a dart, by KO flashes, by the Omen flashes we saw right there. All of these factors can help you get into this position and have a better fight on the killjoy. Now, what could we have done differently here? We knew that there was going to be a site hit. So we just held this position way too long. It's that simple. When we know that there's a big amount of people here, which is what we there's get off of this boom bot, it. hearing and listening to how many people are blasting onto the site, the rocket is fantastic because it displaces them. But what you need to do here is accept the fact oh, that yeah. two is already you. taken. With five numbers and a crossfire that's weak between Sova and Ray's, it's not likely you're going to be holding that 5v2. So backing off and creating space here is important. The next tendency to read is that Jet has done this entry before. So those are two things that need to be in Wuhujin's mind when it comes to positioning. This is tough to do in the moment, but making small reads like this throughout the entire game helps so much with your positioning and helping to counter a lot of things. So listen to this boom bot again. We hear the reinteraction of one two people okay two people and potentially another hit so we're looking at looking at around three here and we already know we've already Maybe. called out there's a good chance that there's going to be a hit here again the omen alt or omen flash comes here so we needed to be back a few paces before maybe even playing in the boathouse and getting ready for a retake and holding that space had we popped alt afterwards that would have been fine i'm totally okay with that but we needed to be back before this jet ended up dashing in that's on site so a couple factors here. Limited information, again, they're letting map control being taken here for free, consistently. The Sova is being quite weak with information. We could be asking for more information, more drones, all these things at certain sections throughout the timer. Usually around one minute mark, we need to have something thrown there. Usually at the 40 second mark, it's another good time to do it. 30 second mark is another great time. 20 second time, uh, mark is an even better time. Um, but we need to be sectioning up uh, when we're throwing the dart, when we're throwing the drone, when we're asking for sky flashes, all these different things to be able to get the information. Staggering our boom bot to be able to control this area and get the information that they're going to be doing this earlier so that we can position better. It's all about information on this map and knowing where to stand. 
Omen's B main. Uh, just playing default. They're gonna play a default. Okay. With Omen being B main and then the flash like this, it looks like it's probably gonna be an execution again. Me. Yeah. Over. Nice trade. And CGGs. Another really interesting game, and I think the major factor here, what we talked about, if we're gonna look in retrospect, gamble plays obviously were a factor here and when to make the moves and try to be aggressive. Also, you talked about the value of eco rounds. And I think the biggest factor is understanding how important info is on this map. Right away, we had two agents on this particular comp that could have gotten info and they didn't take full advantage over their util and their kit so for sova mains for sky mains take a look at this vod closely and ask yourself where do i need to throw that util in order to enable both my raids and my players to be able to predict where they're going to go because prediction is so key on defense here now for wahujin it's all coming back down to those communications asking at certain times if you have someone who is not playing so properly or at sky properly we have so much information learn to stagger and call out when you can get those flashes in there for information easy information the darts and the drone at the certain times to be able to get the most out of it awesome game love to see the improvement from wahujin and i'm excited to see more Thank you so much for watching as always, everyone.